Uh, okay, it is November 7th, um, and this is Engineering Ethics at NJIT. Sorry, Adam, I, I messed up on the last video, so I'm starting a new video. Uh, uh, my plan for today is to just go over... Uh, I'm going to shut off your audio. Okay. Uh, yeah, so my plan today uh, uh, is to go over the... Uh, assignment, sorry, so uh, this is week nine, I'm sorry, week 10, uh, uh, engineering ethics, uh, week 10, uh, lesson 10, this is our case study. So let's go ahead and just jump into the lesson, uh, look at what's going on. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so we're on lesson 10. This is a research week. Uh, this week you should be finding your own case to study um, and presenting research that you've done uh, this is a big research project. It's worth more than a normal week. And in fact, it's worth twice, your uh, essay is worth twice a normal post. Uh, so I want to go over all the details uh, to make sure that you understand uh, the assignment this week and what's expected of you uh, for this lesson. Sorry. Uh, all right, so uh, you need to pick your own case. It needs to be a real historical case. It can't be a hypothetical case like the uh, NSPE review board cases that we've been looking at. Um, it needs to be a real historical case. Uh, and you're going to need to do some research, um, some library research, to find some scholarly uh, analysis of your case. Um, we're doing this, uh, the lesson will take place over weeks 10 and 11. So it's a two week project. Um, and you have assignments due both weeks. So in lesson 10, uh, I want you to do the fact finding mission. You're supposed to give a report about what happened, the facts of the case, uh, the extent of the damage, who was involved. Right, just, uh, uh, just the facts for this week. Um, introduce people to the case uh, and, and why it's interesting, why you thought it was an uh, interesting case, uh, how it might pertain to your career, right, these kinds of uh, facts about the case. Uh, the goal is to present on the facts this week and then lesson 11 to post uh, an ethical analysis. So given the facts of the case, who is responsible, uh, how should they be punished, how do, how do we prevent, uh, make sure that this doesn't happen again, this is what you're going to be talking about in lesson 11. It should, both cases, uh, both assignments should be on the same case. Um, so uh, you only pick one case. Uh, so pick a case that you're going to like working on for two weeks. Uh, your post should be a normal length post, a 350 word normal length post. Um, uh, so you're not going to need to write more. Uh, 350 words is the minimum, as always. Uh, you really can't do much. Uh, uh, reporting in less than 350 words, so you'll probably find you'll need to do more than this uh, to explain all the relevant details of your case. Um, but it shouldn't be, uh, the emphasis here isn't on writing the report, the emphasis is really on the research. Um, go look up information, your report should reflect the information that you learn. Uh, so you have to do scholarly research for this assignment. Uh, um, normal assignments, you just have to look at the material that I provide or give your own opinions, but this time I want you to do scholarly research to uh, actually find uh, the facts of the case and present them to class. Hopefully some of our own case analysis gives you some insight into what counts as a useful source or not. Um, uh, in particular, I'm requiring that you do four scholarly sources with full citations and an annotation. In other words, I want you to do an annotated bibliography. Uh, I want you to list all the sources that you provide, uh, I mean, that you use in order to do your research, right? So, so put all the stuff, if you, if you go to Wikipedia, for instance, um, include a Wikipedia link at the end of your essay. Um, but in addition to the normal research that you do, I want you to additionally give an annotated bibliography where you cite four scholarly sources, give them a full citation in APA style, um, and then give them a little annotation where you explain what's going on. So let me go over this in, in some more careful detail. Uh, so, um, first of all, uh, it's a requirement that you're providing primary sources, scholarly journal articles, or long-form investigative journalism. So a primary source, the link I had to what's primary sources uh, went away. So a primary source is the uh, origin of this information. Uh, uh, primary source is the, is the place where this information was created. So you need to find, this is not a good source. Uh, the primary source is, is the original source. Uh, it's an artifact that gives you the original information. 
so primary sources are good. Um, the more likely sources you're going to find are scholarly publications, scholarly journal articles written in a peer-reviewed journal. Um, scholarly publications are different from popular publications, like an article in Time Magazine or People Magazine or some other website that you might find. Um, usually the stuff that you find online are popular publications. And for this assignment, it's required that you do real scholarly research. Uh, go look up something in the library um, on Google Scholar. Uh, something that's peer reviewed uh, that uh, serves as a scholarly analysis. Uh, the other option I have here is long form investigative journalism. Uh, so, uh, New York Times, for instance, writes a bunch of articles on all sorts of different topics, uh, but most of those topics are just sort of uh, news articles, just telling you about something that happens. Um, but investigative journalism is a little bit more detailed. Investigative journalism is usually where a reporter goes and finds primary sources uh, to, um, to publish. Uh, so for instance, the Mark Dowie article that we read from the Mother Jones uh, journal. Uh, so that's a, it's a popular publication, it's a news publication, um, but Mother Jones engages in long form investigative journalism. Uh, so Mark Dowie uh, actually went to Ford and found those oh, documents. Hello? That's nice. Spend time with the girls. All right, I'm uh, muting you. Uh, all right, so, uh, yeah, investigative journalism. The Mark Dowie article is an investigative journalism article. It, the article, the journalist uh, uncovers primary sources and then publishes them. Um, so if you find an investigative journalism article, um, uh, so something that pulls up uh, primary documents, something that pulls up interviews, um, interviews with key source, uh, key figures, in an event. Um, if you can find an interview, that might also count as a primary source. Um, the real common sources are things like uh, uh, government reports. So, so for instance, if you do, if you do uh, your report on Chernobyl, I strongly recommend that you don't do your report on Chernobyl just because it's so common. But if you do your report on Chernobyl, um, you might pull up websites like these. Uh, so this is the worst kind of website. Here, Live Science has a website, Facts About the Nuclear Disaster at Chernobyl. Um, and then it goes over a bunch of facts, a bunch of facts, where it happened, what went wrong, uh, what was involved, what happened, right? Um, all these facts, you know, they might be accurate, they might be good facts. Um, you might learn a lot of things from reading this kind of article. Uh, and it's fine if you use this kind of article. If you use this kind of article, make sure that you include a link to the article in your report so that I know where you're getting your sources. If you check Wikipedia, Wikipedia is also a good source for information. Lots of information in here, lots of details about what happened. Uh, some of these are technical details about what happened. Um, uh, you can pull a lot of information out of the Wikipedia article. Uh, and please do, by all means, Wikipedia is a good source. If you want to use Wikipedia articles, please do, uh, and then cite them um, at the bottom of your essay. But Wikipedia articles and articles like this life science article, these are not scholarly journal articles. These are not primary sources. Uh, and neither of these would count as part of your scholarly research for this assignment. Not that there isn't good information there, but you need to track down the sources of this information. The, the more difficult thing to talk about are things like worldnuclear.org. So if you do Chernobyl, the first thing that comes up is this website, worldnuclear.org. It's a, a nuclear information uh, website. It gives lots of information, lots of really good information. If you look at this website, um, lots of information about who died, technical information about uh, what happened at the plant, exactly what went wrong. Um, you can learn a lot of really useful information from a site like worldnuclear.org. But again, worldnuclear.org is not a primary source for this information. It's not a scholarly journal article. Um, it's not uh, investigative journalism. Uh, this is basically an encyclopedia article, like Wikipedia. Uh, neither of these are appropriate sources for scholarly research. If you want the appropriate sources for scholarly research, scroll down to the bottom. At the bottom of this World Nuclear. Uh, .org website, they have all their references. Um, same thing with Wikipedia. If you scroll down to the bottom of Wikipedia, uh, you get all the references that Wikipedia uses. Here's all the citations. Uh, notice that some of these citations are primary documents. These are uh, government uh, uh, reports um, from lots of different government agencies about what happened at the disaster. Uh, the, the, uh, some NGO, non-governmental agencies, giving reports. Uh, these reports are primary sources. These are completely legitimate sources for using in scholarly research. Right? This is where Wikipedia is getting all its information. You see the same thing here, worldnuclearassociation.org. Uh, they're also getting their information from all these government reports. These are the primary sources. You should be using primary sources 
uh, further research in your article. You can use these other sources as well, but your annotated bibliography assignment must include primary sources or scholarly journal articles. Most of these are primary sources or government reports. Some of these are scholarly journal articles. This last one is a scholarly journal article. Um, so I'm asking that these articles are cited in APA style, and I give a link that discusses how APA style. Oh, that thing doesn't work. Uh, Oh, no, no, this, this, is, this is how we do our uh, citation. So, for instance, a journal article. Um, here's a sample journal. I and mean, you can actually uh, look at this to see exactly how it does. The really important thing about citations, so I'm not going to be a stickler to make sure that all the uh, periods and commas and so on are in the right space so it's all italicized correctly. The really important things that I'll be looking for in your citations, I'm asking for it to be APA style, but if it's some other style, that's fine as long as very clearly you have the author the date, um, where it's printed, um, the title of the article, and the print where it's published, the publisher. If it's a journal article, you should have some journal here. If it's a book, you should have some publisher here. Uh, it's really important that all of these resources are available in your citations. Author, date, title, publication, uh, source. Um, and make sure this information is accurate. So for instance, the date, uh, make sure you actually put a year. Um, almost every source that you have will have a year available, but it's very common for uh, citation generators to put ND for the year. Uh, if you put ND for the year, um, but your article very clearly has a year that it was published, then you're going to lose points for that. That's not a sufficient citation. Make sure that your citation is accurate. Uh, if it has ND, ND stands for no date. Uh, uh, it's very rare that you'll have a, a source that doesn't that isn't dated in this way. Um, so if you if you find if I find an ND on your citation list, I'm probably going to mark it down because that's not an accurate citation. So I have this little interactive guide to help you figure out how to do your citations. Uh, I'm not just asking for annotation. I'm, uh, I'm not just asking for the citation of these scholarly sources. I'm also asking for annotations. So. Uh, your assignment is officially to do an annotated bibliography. Um, an annotated bibliography not just gives a citation, but also summarizes what's, in, what's the important information in that citation. So here on this Wikipedia page, uh, they give an example of an annotated bibliography. There's your citation, and there's your uh, annotation. The annotation is just a couple of sentences, it's pretty short, and it explains why this particular source is valuable, what information uh, did we use, did we get from this source that was useful to the report that you're writing? Uh, make sure that the information you're getting from these sources is actually useful. Don't just quote or cite a source that you don't actually use in your research. Um, you need to show me how the sources that you turned up in your research uh, informed the reports that you write. If there's no clear link between the report that you write and the research that you do, this will also end up getting you marked down on this assignment. Um, in particular, if, you, if your report is all written from Wikipedia, just the facts you can get on Wikipedia, but all your sources are much more in-depth sources, uh, uh, and your annotation doesn't make clear what value those sources have, um, this is the kind of stuff that will get you marked down. But I want to see integration here. I want to see that the post is informed by the research and that the research is uh, in, embedded in the actual primary sources or scholarly uh, discussion. Uh, so yeah, so your main assignment is to write a post, um, and then you also have to do this annotated bibliography. Um, for the full project, you need four sources, four primary sources, scholarly journal articles. That is for the full assignment uh, for both lessons 10 and 11. And the way that I'm asking you to do this is I want you to submit two completed annotated bibliography citations for lesson 10, and then two more for lesson 11. Um, and then in lesson 11, I want you to not just post the two new ones, but post all four. So you do two this week. And then next week you publish four, that's two that you do this week, and then two more that you do next week. Um, presumably all these sources are going to go into your research, um, but uh, I'm just requiring that you have completed the annotated bibliography for two sources each week. 
And the annotated bibliography will count as your quiz credit for this week. So let me um, pull up a, uh, one of my previous courses. Oops. Uh, okay. Myself a student. So you're seeing what's great. So I just wanted to give an example of uh, uh, what, a, what a completed post looks like. Um, so this is uh, this post on Sean Carpenter, a whistleblower. Here's the post itself, 400 words of writing about uh, that introduces the case itself and what happened. Um, and then the first reply to the post. So he replies to his own thread. And in the first reply, he has his annotated bibliographies. Uh, this is citation and then a little paragraph explaining what's valuable in the source. So the requirement here is that you publish your bibliography as the first reply in your thread. Um, uh, yeah, I, I say this a couple of times on Moodle. Uh, it must be the first reply in your thread. The reason it's your first reply is because I grade, because uh, you're getting a separate grade for your annotated bibliography. So the annotated bibliography counts basically as quiz credit. So uh, 20 points. So I want to have another box down here to give you 20 points on this that's separate from your grade on the main assignment. If you have more than two sources, if you have like Wikipedia articles you also want to cite, uh, throw those down here in the reply um, so that your post is just your post and your, your first reply should be uh, your own reply to your own thread where you list out your annotated bibliography. Um, failure to put your bibliography in the first reply will result in a five point penalty. Just remember that. Uh, yeah. So the research presentation, it's worth twice as, twice as normal posts. Normal posts is worth 50 points maximum. Research presentation is worth 100 points maximum. So the post itself is worth twice as much. Um, you still have to do replies as normal, but instead of a quiz, those, those 20 points are going into your bibliography, um, where each source is graded on, uh, is 10 points each. Uh, and I'm gonna be grading the sources on the quality of the source. Is it actually a scholarly journal article? or is it just a, a popular article? Um, you get the citation correctly, in particular that you have author date, year, title, publication. Uh, and then how good your annotations are. Are you actually giving me important information about the source? Uh, all right, uh, that's the assignment. Um, I have a lot more details online. Uh, what you should be thinking about right now is what you actually want to do your assignment on. I have a big list of cases here. I'll just remind you again that Three Mile Island Chern Chernobyl, Hyatt Regency Walkway Collapse, uh, Tacoma Narrows Bridge Collapse. These are all very common cases. It'll be done uh, several times in each section. Uh, but you might want to do one of these other cases. And just don't limit yourself to just the ones that I list here. Um, I also give lists of other engineering disasters as structural failures, other cases of whistleblowing, and so on. Uh, find a case that matters to you. Find a case that's relevant to your career, uh, to things that you expect to encounter in your own field uh, going forward. Um, along these lines, if you're interested in talking about sexual harassment or discrimination, so Title IX stuff, uh, uh, we've mentioned a little bit of this. We talked, we had a unit on uh, women in STEM, but that was really just about the low uh, ratio of women in STEM. It wasn't about sexual harassment, really about discrimination very much. Uh, these are both important issues that uh, deserve some discussion in this class. If you are interested in talking about these issues, uh, please feel free to take that up. Um, also, gift giving and bribe, bribery. Um, these are we've talked a little bit about this when we were talking about the code of ethics, uh, but there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff to talk about with these issues. If you want to talk about, for instance, the George Washington Bridge um, trial just happened, just wrapping up. Uh, uh, these are also uh, okay to talk about. Uh, uh, also think about uh, cases relevant to your career. If you're a software person, you might look for software cases. If you're a chemical engineer, you might look for chemical engineering cases. Um, oh, what, so one thing about the sources, uh, make sure that the sources are actually giving you useful information. If the source is just giving you information that you could look up on Wikipedia or whatever, uh, that's, not very helpful. Make sure that the sources, make sure that you show that the sources are actually informing your research. Um, uh, along these lines, uh, some people have worried about wanting to talk about cases where there's no 
or very little uh, primary sources or scholarly research. So for instance, the VW case, um, this is pretty new in the news, it's about a year old. Uh, there's not probably not very much published about it in scholarly journals. Um, there's a lot of commentary in popular news articles, but there just hasn't been a whole lot of investigative journalism, not a whole lot of primary sources. There also hasn't been a lot of uh, court case or government hearings or whatever um, to yield a bunch of primary sources. This might make the case a bad case to do for this assignment because you have trouble pulling up sources. Um, so one of the things you should be thinking about when you pick a case is how easy is it to find sources. But if you really want to do a case like this where you're having trouble finding sources on the case itself, um, there's another option you have, which is to pull up research that helps you think about the case. Right? So maybe there's discussions that aren't about the specific case you want to talk about, but that they're more general uh, ethical discussions that pertain to your case. Maybe that'll also help. Uh, kind of kind of research. So, so for instance, uh, someone um, emailed me asking about uh, this RimWorld controversy. Uh, happened over the last couple of days. Uh, yeah. So, uh, first article that comes up is this Kotaku article. Um, but uh, this this article it's a sort of space romance article. Um, and you get to pick gender roles, but the gender roles are very strictly defined in the in the game, and it's created this sort of blowback from the community, frustrated with the game being so strictly defined. Uh, so, very interesting case about uh, sort of digital communities and uh, gender roles uh, in uh, gaming environments. Right? All this stuff is really interesting. I mean, the person who asked me about this is, was uh, developing games in their own, um, so it's sort of relevant to their career. It's a perfectly fine case to talk about. There's lots of ethical issues um, at stake in a, in a case like this. The problem, though, is that this stuff just happened. This happened last week. Um, it's still being talked about online, and there's not a whole lot of scholarly sources. Right? So you might think this is a problem. Should you even do this research? Well, maybe if you really care about the case, go ahead and do this research. Um, and what you should, uh, what my suggestion to him was to, you know, you're probably not going to find much research on this particular case, but you'll find a lot of discussion about. Uh, gaming communities, about the ethics of gaming communities, about the ethics of gender roles, and about the ethics of how uh, gender roles uh, align, or how gender roles appear or, or uh, uh, manifest themselves in these gaming environments. Right, so there's lots of stuff here more generally to talk about, and there's been lots of discussion about these general issues, about gender roles, about gaming communities, about gender roles in gaming communities. Uh, there's lots of good research already out there about gender roles in, in gaming communities. and so. They're not talking about this specific case because this specific case just happened, but you might take that previous research and try to apply it to this case. And that would be a perfectly legitimate example of how to uh, find scholarly research articles. Um, even though they're not on your case particular, it can be applied to your case. Uh, all right, the last thing I'll say, and then I'll just go ahead and end the video early. The last thing I'll say is that um, this assignment always gets lots of plagiarism. Um, in fact, the word of the uh, the secret word word of the day, the secret word today is going to be plagiarism. Just to remind you that this is a problem. Uh, that is the word plagiarism. Um, uh, plagiarism is a big problem. Every semester, I get several students per class plagiarizing on this assignment. Um, I get several students per class plagiarizing, sort of all semester. And in every one of the classes this semester, I've caught at least someone plagiarizing, um, copying, pasting something from Wikipedia or whatever. Uh, uh, small instances of plagiarism, if it's already happened, it probably got zero credit on the assignment. Um, but uh, extensive, extreme cases of plagiarism, an entire report copied or several paragraphs copied, uh, these, will, uh, these are not tolerated and they'll be referred to the Dean of Students as, an academic, as a violation of academic integrity. The NJAT has a, a student code, a uh, student ethical code, um, that includes things like no plagiarism. Um, and just to be clear, plagiarism is presenting any material that is not your own as if it's your own. So, for instance, uh, if I'm using a Wikipedia article and I copy a bunch of stuff in the Wikipedia article, uh, like copy the entire paragraph from the Wikipedia article and put it in my essay, I'm in the very end, I link to the Wikipedia article and say I use the source. Well, that's still plagiarism. Even though I provided the link to the source, I'm still presenting the material as if it's my own. Right? Failing to adequately indicate that you're quoting, that you're citing someone, uh, 
any, any way of presenting the material where there's an ambiguity, where it's, it's not clear that it's your, your own. If you're copying any others, anyone else's work, if you're copying facts and figures from another source, you need to have that source clearly identified as where you're getting that information from. For most of these cases, you're going to be giving facts about a case um, that clearly you just don't have off the top of your head. They didn't come about yourself. You found those, you found those facts somewhere. So those facts need to be cited. Um, if you miss a citation, if it's a small issue, um, it might just re receive uh, a small penalty. Maybe it takes the points off for inadequate citation. Um, if, it's, if it's your quoting and copying stuff, uh, you might get zero credit on the assignment. But if it's an extreme case, so if you're copying several sentences, several paragraphs, the whole assignment, uh, or you don't put any of your research, um, these will get uh, reported to the Dean of Students. Uh, the maximum violation for plagiarism is expulsion from the university. It was a very serious offense. It could result in your uh, being kicked out of the university. Um, and I take it very seriously. This is an ethics, ethics class. I can't let people get away with cheating in an ethics class. Uh, I've caught some people cheating already. It's usually very obvious cases of cheating. Um, but uh, uh, I expect to catch a lot more people. Uh, uh, I've caught a lot of people already, but it's usually these, these obvious cases that I can catch just by reading the assignments. I haven't done any extensive uh, checking for plagiarism, um, but for this research project, I will do extensive checking for plagiarism. I'll run everyone's uh, essays through a, a, a plagiarizer, plagiarizer checker that compares it to a bunch of other documents online to see if it if uh, if that information is anywhere else. Um, if uh, if your essay comes up on this plagiarism checker, uh, there will be penalties here. And if it's extreme enough, it'll be reported to the Dean of Students. So don't plagiarize. Please don't plagiarize. Please do your own work. I will say the plagiarism is also, it's a lot of work for me. I have to uh, uh, write a bunch of reports to the Dean of Students explaining why uh, these students are, it, 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 it's, a, it's a big sort of uh, red, red it's a paperwork nightmare. Um, so to, uh, it makes me get very upset when students cheat. So uh, please don't make me get upset. Uh, please don't plagiarize. Uh, I'll also say that uh, I often find students who do way more work than they have to by plagiarizing. Um, I have found students who, uh, what they do is they have like five or ten different sources and they pull one sentence out to read each of the different sources and then sort of stitch them together so that it looks like a coherent essay. That's a lot of work to uh, pick out sentences from different sources and put them together to a coherent essay, that takes a lot of work. Um, it would be much easier to just, you could write a very bad essay off the top of your head that would do better than a plagiarized essay taking uh, sentences from lots of different sources. The plagiarized essay will, will fail the assignment and will probably get reported to the Dean of Students, but the really bad essay that's written off the top of your head will probably just fail the assignment um, as opposed to possibly getting kicked out of the class. Right, so it's a big difference here, and I'm going to be a big, I'm going to be a stickler about plagiarism for this assignment. I'm going to look at everyone's uh, essays very closely. So don't give me a reason to uh, cause trouble. Uh, does anyone here have questions about the assignments, about the assignment structure, about the grading policy, about the annotated bibliography or the sources? Neither of them are talking. I think Taylor was on a phone call earlier. So uh, I'll assume that there are no other questions. Um, if you do have questions, send me an email. If you have sources that you're looking at, or if you have a case that you're looking at, and you're not sure if you want to, if it's a good case, you should keep working on it. Uh, send me an email. I'll try to respond to everything I can. Um, I'll also be in my office hours on Wednesday uh, in the afternoon from 10 to 12. Um, and I'll probably be in my office again on Thursday. So uh, good luck with your research. Uh, good luck with your reports. I'm excited to see what you turn up. Yeah, if there's no other questions, uh, I'll stop there. Thank you very much. <laughs>